kind of basic information about what they're doing. And then we want to open up the floor so that you all can ask questions about what you would really like to know about these various career fields and how you can make the most of your Oglethorpe of education um, now that they've had a chance to see a different side of it. Okay. Um, since we have a small group, I think it would be great for us to just maybe share our names, maybe um, our majors, and if we can do that, uh, that would be great. You can start with me. Uh, my name is Maggie, I'm a business major. Okay. Uh, Steven, accounting major. Okay, and he's a junior. Yes. And freshman. Yes. Okay. I'm Kayla, I'm bio psych. And what year? Uh, freshman. Sorry, I didn't ask that. Okay, freshman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Dan, I'm freshman. Say it again. Uh, I'm Dan. Okay. Business major? Freshman? Thank you. Uh, I'm Trin, I'm Trin, I'm business uh, administration. Business administration. Yeah. I'm Paige Davis, I'm a freshman, I'm a business major. Okay. I'm Matthew Murray, I'm a first year, I'm a history major. Okay. I'm, I'm Norm Finley, I'm a trustee. <laughs> and I was a business major three years ago. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Deborah Humans, I'm a business administration major. And I'm and first of all, I'm um, first year of a business major. Welcome. Um, and then I'll let Susie explain maybe um, her background a little bit, her role here at the university, and then we'll turn it over to the panelists and, and you all can share your backgrounds with us as well. Yeah, one of the things that's really nice about working at Oglethorpe is kind of the collaboration that we all have. Um, my name is Susie Sharfman, and I'm the Director of Alumni Relations um, at Oglethorpe. I've been in this position for just a few months. So I have still a lot to learn, a lot, a lot of people to meet, um, but um, I have had the opportunity to, to talk to a few people so far in different uh, meetings and organizations that I've been involved in. And one of the things that I want, want to say, I want you guys to realize, is how important it is to have alumni who are so willing to support what you're trying to accomplish here. And that's what this panel is doing for us today. They all have their own lives, they have children, they have jobs, they have lots of responsibilities and they're here today to share their experience with you and I think that that is um, that's really a, a, a testament to what Oval Corp um, provides to their students and what these individuals feel like they want to give back to their alma mater so it's, it's very exciting. Um, as far as my background I actually uh, worked in uh, development at another prior institution um, doing um, donor relations which is very similar to um, alumni relations but I started off with a business degree as well, and thought I wanted to do something related to like retailing or working in stores and stuff like that. And I did that for a little while and didn't like it. So then I got involved in human resources, and from there I ended up in higher ed and was able to work with human resources there, but also was able to move into um, some of the adult education programs and things like that. So it's been, you know, the, the neat thing about, about Careers is that just remember that you can change as many times as you want. Right, Amy? That's right. That's right. And, and my background is similar in that um, I also was in human resources and found my way into career counseling a little bit later in life. This is extremely rewarding. And I say to students that career is a journey that never really ends. And I'm sure that the panelists can, can um, give testament to the fact that their jobs have been reinvented over the years and that they have been trying new things within their roles. And so um, I think in today's world, we have to have an open, sort of flexible mindset when approaching employment. Um, the average number of jobs between the ages of 18 and 40, what do you think that is today? Anyone have a, have a guesstimate as to how many? Seven. Seven. Any others? Three. Three? This is according to the Department of Labor. Ten. Ten. Ten is the correct answer. That's the average number of positions that a person holds today between the ages of 18 and 42. And that was not the case, um, you know, several years ago in, in my parents' time, certainly not the case. And so you can see the evolution of the workplace. And that means that we have to develop an also ever-changing um, mindset in terms of the skills that we bring from one assignment to the next, that you have control and you have the power to create the life that you want and the journey that you would like to have in your career. So. Having said all of that, I'd like to turn it over to the panelists to maybe just give a short description, and they have some bios that we can pass out as well. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing your name um, and what you do and what your major was when you were at Oglethorpe, um, we'll kind of leave it at that, and then we'll start off with one question that the panelists can respond to. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Alright, my name is Chris Benner. I'm a partner in a public accounting firm here in town, Ben and Thrasher. I graduated in 2001 and I was the business and behavioral sciences major. My name is Brian Finley. Uh, I'm currently the construction manager for Atlanta Habitat for Humanity uh, here in Atlanta. And uh, my major was business. I'm Lauren Howard. I graduated at Oglethorpe in 2008. I was a business administration major um, and a Spanish minor. I worked for McKesson as a basically sales consultant with large pharmaceutical companies. My name is March Ramos. I'm the old lady major. I graduated in 1995. Um, I was a business and behavioral sciences major, so um, I transitioned to different industry is kind of extreme. I did the corporate thing, that thing. Now I work in the TV and film industry. I'm the locations coordinator at BET Networks, uh, which is also owned by, by Viacom, the same company that owns MTV, VH1. So um, I'll ask the first question and we'll kick it off. And then if you all have a question you'd like to ask, feel free to just raise your hand and we'll open it. And sometimes this panel sort of takes a light. Um, I'm wondering if the panelists can, can speak to um, what the transition was like from Oglethorpe to that first job. Um, what was the process like? How did you go about finding the position? Uh, what experiences did you have here that you felt helped you get into that role? So, stop there. I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'd be glad to start. When I graduated, <clears throat> I, I uh, graduated with a uh, business degree, kind of because I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I figured that with a business degree, whatever career I went to, whatever job you had, it's part of business. So it would be a good underlying thing. Uh, I thought about being an architect, um, and was was actually going to school at Oglethorpe allowed me the opportunities to like intern for a week at different architect firms. Um, and I thought I would be like I am Pei or some famous architect and <laughs> do these huge buildings. And I met the guys that were designing the uh, screws for the HVAC system. And that's all they did in some cubby in the corner. And I was like, that's going to be miserable. I don't want to do that. Um, so when I graduated, I threw my uh, application everywhere um, to anything that would uh, I had an interest in, I put an application in. And I really didn't think twice about that um, because I feel that at Oglethorpe, and when I was going through the program or through school, I didn't really think about it until afterwards, but I, I felt that um, my education was two parts. There's my major, which was business, that really taught me the technical side of management, of finance, um, and everything else. And, and then there's the core. And I really thought that the core, when I was going through the core, was a good opportunity to smell, or to smell, to sound smart at cocktail parties. I really didn't understand what the core was about um, until I started applying and talking to people. And I realized what the core taught me was critical thinking. Um, how, to, how to come up with my own thoughts, how to uh, justify why I got to those thoughts, and how to express myself clearly um, to, to uh, make my point. And so graduating, throwing my uh, application everywhere that I could, um, I, I had the confidence, because I had that background, I soon realized that a lot of people aren't taught to think. Um, they're, they're taught information, they give that information back, but they don't understand the why. And that's what I got a lot of confidence at Oglethorpe is because I was taught to ask why and then figure out on my own why. Um, and, that, and so as far as putting my application out there, I finally found a place in construction that I really enjoyed it, talked to the guy interviewing and was able to answer his questions. and. Um, and that's where I fell into it and, and fell in love with it. So, hope that kind of. Yeah. I don't know if I want to follow that one up. Um, <laughs> I, I, 
guess for me it was a little more practical. It was, I had, you know, like Ryan graduated and I had a nice resume and I submitted it online anywhere I could, could find. I had a lot of different ideas. Business and behavioral science is a great major, um, but it also gives you a really kind of large camp, uh, canvas to, on which to paint. So you have a lot of different options. And for me, it, it came down to, I had a minor in accounting, so I went back to, I spent a few months trying to find a job, waiting tables, attending bar, and I said, look, I, you know, my accounting professors at the time, I just told them, hey, do you know of anything? And they were the ones that actually got me in the door to start my first job, or at least gave me the interview to, to start. So for me, it was really about as much kind of what you learn and how you're thinking and you know that helps you to present well and speak well in front of people but also you know for me it was about the networking aspect of it knowing somebody who knew somebody that could get me in front of somebody in an interview so my uh, route was maybe a little non-traditional so the during my freshman and sophomore year was really typical student state um, lived on campus and then I started babysitting for to earn some extra money because I wanted to buy Starbucks lattes and go to yoga classes and things like that. Um, so I started babysitting for this family and they were interested in what I was studying and I did a really good job. And it turns out that the family that I babysat for, the um, mother worked for a company called McKesson, which is a Fortune 15 company. And during the summer, I said, you know, I'm looking for an opportunity to get some exposure in the business field. You know, do you have any ideas? And she said, well, we're looking for someone to come in, you know, project management. It's not, it's kind of the job that no one really wants to do in our company. You have to coordinate a lot of different things. And I said, sign me up, let's do it. So during the summer, I got a job uh, with McKesson. And I knew that if I did an awesome job at the position that no one really wanted to do and have a good attitude, that that was going to pay off. And so by the end of the summer, they offered me a full-time job. So at that point, I started working for McKesson in a full-time capacity and worked with um, the resources here at Oglethorpe to continue my education in the university college. And so I switched to become a university college student. and. What was really neat about that is while I was getting that hands-on opportunity, and it's really the, the value of doing things like an internship with, with a corporation, I was able to also get that valuable experience of learning how to ask why. The things that I love about Oglethorpe and I think what prepared me for the business world was there are very few Scantron tests. I mean, all of my friends that went to big state schools filled in a lot of bubbles, and I did a lot of projects. And it was, here's a, here's a company, give me a strategic plan for this company, and you have to present it. And that's exactly what you do, what I do every day in my job, is I'm doing presentations, I'm using my critical thinking skills and that, working, getting that entry level position with McKesson allowed me now, I have, even though I only graduated in 2008 from Oglethorpe, I have over 10 years experience out of Fortune 500 company. So it's an awesome opportunity. Um, and I highly recommend internships because that was my transition to the workplace. Um, in my junior year, I had an internship with a Coca-Cola company. So um, my major was in business behavioral sciences because I wanted to go into human resource management. So that was my in, work with through career services. Um, but it's also about knowing people. So once I'd met somebody, somebody's parents, somebody's, you know, our neighbor that I knew might have that connection, I started talking um, just, you know, as a young person, didn't really know the questions to ask. So it was just, I let them kind of give me the advice. Um, then I took it from there. But I highly recommend um, doing an internship. It's almost a direct line. Um, I spent about seven to eight years with Coca-Cola Company, first as a project management intern, um, then I you know, started working in global um, human resources, and then I switched industries into the uh, software company. Um, so I did all that at a big you know, office, did the suits and heels kind of thing, and then um, 
being an Oglethorpe student, you know, of course, I'm like, this can't be it. I, I gotta expand. I have so many interests, so I ended up changing my career about three more times after that. Um, so, and, and what, you know, just back, um, piggybacking on what they've said, there's, there's so much um, that you can paint your canvas with, but, you know, what was been said. And I think Oglethorpe just equipped me with those tools that I wasn't afraid. I knew I had the knowledge, I knew I had the confidence to um, explore my other interests and make a living out of it. Um, so that's kind of how I, I ended up where I'm at now, very so uncorporate. Um, I, I usually work in cargo pants and <laughs> you know, have a walkie talkie uh, in my back pocket. So, uh, but, but I love it. It's, it's, I, I love the experiences I gained um, from school and then from working the actual, you know, the, the corporate environment. Um, I had that it was sort of in my back pocket. So now it's like, you know, any industry I, I, I'll work in. Um, I'll be comfortable in it. I might have to learn it, start from scratch, but I'm already comfortable that I know um, I'll ease into it sooner than later. So does anybody have a question they'd like to pose to the panel? Yeah. You, you and then Green for a second. Um, I am, uh, I really um, was wondering, uh, there was the response from the panel um, was that there are, there's a number of ways to you know, pursue a career after graduation. Um, there's this connection, these web of connections, and then there's this critical thinking aspect that's key, Brian said, to, um, to you know, thinking for yourself. Um, how do you like, reconcile the two, um, and how do you harness critical thinking in your day-to-day -day, uh, jobs? I can say from, from my background, pr pretty much the first three years, I had no idea what the hell I was doing about anything. Uh, and I had to sit down and logically say to myself, okay, here's my information set. How do I connect these dots in a way that makes sense with the law? So critical thinking comes in in a really big way in that particular instance, right, where you're trying to figure out, I got no idea what this particular section of the law means as it, as it applies to, you know, uh, some tax consulting engagement that I've got to work on. So that's a that's a pretty good example of where kind of building your thinking ability up um, definitely uh, is part of that. Um, what was the second part of your? Um, well, I was kind of at like addressing you know networking and critical thinking and how. Those yeah. So the the critical thinking too, I think, allows you to kind of learn how to respond in a thoughtful way so that, you know, if you're out networking with somebody and you're having a conversation, they can say, wow, that guy really was, you know, he really knew what he was talking about or he was a really thoughtful guy. <coughs> so I'll, I'll um, follow up on that. So the networking aspect, what I always think about is every interaction that you're having with someone, whether it's you're in the drive through line at Starbucks or you're having a conversation, it really matters because Especially if you think about, we're in a major center of business where you're in Buckhead and you're at the Brookhaven Starbucks on Peachtree Road and someone notices that, gosh, that's a young person that just looked me in the eye. They're having a conversation about what was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. That's how you make a connection. I, mean, I, I got so much expo exposure by meeting people that I had no idea gosh, that person runs the largest marketing firm in Atlanta. And that's how slowly, I mean, not necessarily in five minutes, but slowly you start to build a community of resources that you can call when you there's an opportunity. Um, as far as critical thinking, so what I do in my day-to-day -day is I call on, or my clients are big pharmaceutical companies. So I work with the brand and marketing teams, like for Nasonex or for... <coughs> Cialis or Viagra or whatnot, and I go there and I work with those teams to figure out how do we grow your brand? How do we you know, reduce the number of patients that are not filling their prescriptions? Is it the price? Is it the fact of what you're marketing in the field? And so in every day, I've got to learn a new product or a new industry and ask myself those questions of what, what's going on here? How can I help my client? Fill a need that they're not that they're not meeting, 
right now, and that critical component of the Oglethorpe core and just the general um, overarching theme of this university is ask why, think of something from a different perspective, and I think that's what's parlayed um, my career in, to moving forward. You guys are lucky <laughs> with the digital age, social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, everything. I didn't have that in the 90s. It, it was face to face, you actually communicated um, with people in terms of networking. And I think, although that's an advantage to this generation right now, because it's it's instant, you know, there, there's, it's so widespread, you're going to know, you know, information is spread so quickly. Uh, but I think one thing that we're missing is that personal interaction, because your work ethic, your performance is actually going to be your job interview for your next position or your next, you know, like you're saying, you know, they see you do good work, you make eye contact when you communicate, all of those um, when I'm selecting um, work, you know, crew for, for every production that we work on, I, I think of how they work. It's not so much the list of credits, they might have worked, you know, big name movies. That doesn't concern me as much as one, are, can, are you a reliable worker? That kind of thing. What kind of work ethic do you have? Um, you know, communication is so big. Um, there's only so much networking can do, and I know a lot of young um, people just, you know, overanalyze the whole networking process. At some point, you have to stop networking, work that job, that's going to get you through. Um, more than just connect, connecting digitally. Um, it's nice to have, to be connected, you know, virtually to people who might work in companies or industries that you might be interested in, but what do you do with that connection, right? You have to follow up, you have to pursue it. Um, you know, us being connected on LinkedIn, it's like, okay, now what? <laughs> kind of thing, you, you have to pursue that. Um, and then go back to your question of critical thinking. Um, I wear different hats in the film industry. Um, I usually work as a unit production manager if I'm working commercials and videos, uh, music videos, if I'm working TV shows and um, feature films, I work in the locations department. What locations does is it's not just scouting. I'm actually not a scout because I hate scouting. It's kind of like driving aimlessly, looking for something that somebody gave you a list. And then you come back to them, and they're like, no, we don't want that. I just spent like two days you know, doing that. So I don't do scouting. But as a locations manager or a locations coordinator, there's a lot of permits um, that we have to do um, in order to film in one place. There's a lot of logistics involved. I'm moving about 100 working trucks, 20 ton. I'm more, I mean, moving um, 200 crew. I'm working, you know, actors, uh, uh, extras, and all that. I have to figure out, you know, use my critical thinking, use sort of like um, um, my knowledge and background on personnel and, and managing equipment and, and flawlessly. There's a time frame that I have to kind of adhere to. There are laws that I have to adhere to. Um, I'm actually I'm actually retained here as the liaison for team and film here on campus. So uh, I come in whenever all these commercials and uh, TV shows come here and want to film. I'm sure you guys have um, experienced some of those lately. I, that's my fault, good and bad. <laughs> but um, if, if you've seen, you know, there's equipment here, there's, there, there's people here. So um, one of the impact is, is to lessen the impact of community. That's to make sure, let's say for Oval Four, um, you know, classes are uninterrupted. There's, you know, things that are still, parking is always an issue. So there, there's those things on a, on a daily basis as a locations manager that, or a locations coordinator, um, that I have to put my, you know, all the gears are kind of, Grinding and moving. Yeah, question back to. Yes, <clears throat> my question is: um, um, You all came through the doors of Overthrow, and you are all came for employment in different areas. And um, based on your employment, I believe it's as a result of someone's dream that you are helping other maintain or fostering it. Um, did anywhere in your educational process in Albertro, did, did um, anyone try to direct you in the path of being um, a creator, whereas you are more focused in business on employer and that employee, on your own business, your own design, 
did you get any kind of guidance along the road in trying to probably get you thinking like, what can I create? How can I be my own business? Uh, how can I be an entrepreneur? Did you get that kind of um, direction or just in terms of a game plan? Yeah, that's, that's kind of how, honestly, I know accounting sounds dull at first blush, but that's how they got me in the door was, hey, you can create, you can start your own business if you learn how to do this. And that was really exciting to me, and that's what I still do today. So I think there, you know, certainly on the business side, I think there's, uh, there was Chris Benton, who was head in the accounting department back then, Holly Hoffman before that. Um, they're the ones that kind of got me started down that road. So I don't know if it was a similar for you guys. Absolutely. I don't know. Is Mike Coran, uh, I don't know if some of you guys may have taken classes with him. So he taught in the university college and a lot of, I took a class with him and then afterwards I ended up signing up for every single class, course and it was more finance geared and I'm not really a math person but I have a lot of finance credits to my name now. But he, he said, Lauren, you have the ability to go in and lead a group of people and get the job done. And so, you know, at that time I was looking at maybe changing career um, gears into doing more pharmaceutical sales and calling up doctors because that was like the hot thing to do. And I decided to take a shift and to really go more into kind of the consulting route because of that advice. And so I got the opportunities to take leadership roles and projects. So you guys are probably right now have the opportunity to do a lot of projects and volunteer into certain positions. Take all of those opportunities because that's where you figure out, do I like working with people, do I not? Do I want to just kind of run run my own, you know, be a, be a worker or be a part of the team? Do I want to lead a team? And that experience, I didn't think I would be well suited for that and it ended up being something I liked. So the, the professor helped me find that. I think more than anything, Oglethorpe gave me the gut. Just to, I'm not an entrepreneur, I thought about it. Um, it's just maybe not the route for me. But um, the guts to really just go for it. Because as business owners and entrepreneurs, that's what you're going to need. And I don't think um, I ever really wanted to pursue that. But um, I think um, Dr. Straley was my um, advisor. And he really wanted us to be leaders um, in, in whatever we do. Um, and I think if I asked him about that opportunities, he would have encouraged me, but I, I had never. That's a, that's, that's a brave step, I think, to be in the And Dr. Kendra King, I think she's still, she's still here. So I was in the Rich Urban Leadership Program um, throughout Oglethorpe and that program is very challenging and she would always, I always felt like she was really tough and said, Lauren, this is good, but it's not what you're capable of doing. So I love this 20 page paper, but let's make that a little bit better. And that criticism, being able to take that in instruction and turn that into something that's great or exceptional really helps you know prepare you for the the next step and helps you know when you're thinking about what you're dreaming about or you know how these professor professors shape you you don't realize it when you're sitting there thinking I just wrote this 22 page paper come on <coughs> you think about it in hindsight saying gosh I'm really glad that someone gave me that criticism because it, it's helped me be more critical of my own work Especially as an entrepreneur, you're going to get more no's than yeses. So being accustomed to that, receiving that, being receptive to it is key. How was your um, interview experience? And now being on the other side, hopefully if you ever have interviewed anyone, um, what tips or advice would you give for interviewing these people coming? I cried because <laughs> I was so shaky and nervous that I just like freaked out and just yeah I just suddenly started tears coming um, but that was yeah very first like free corporate so I was like I, I very young very kind of intimidated um, I would make notes and practice 
um, especially if I, whenever I started applying for jobs that you know the job description was there, um, I would break it down and see what kind of how I can connect it and say, okay, they're looking for this. What do I have? Um, you have to prepare for that interview. You can't just, preparation is not just dressing well for it. You really have to, okay, here's what they're looking for. Here's what I have or don't have. By the way, it's okay if you're not, you don't think, oh, I don't think I'm qualified for that because um, employers don't, oh, it, it's a wish list, right? But they don't always get that because they can always develop your skills. They can always help you develop that. Um, but yes, you have to break it down, really think, Maybe this job isn't for me, right? Of course, we got to pay the bills, but um, you, you got to prepare yourself and breaking that down, and then how you're going to communicate. Because I think that's why I freaked out. Is I don't know what, what kind of response I was, you, you know, going to give. Um, so practice with somebody, um, whether it's career services, a friend, parent, you know, somebody. Yeah, I mean, learn how to say no. Turn it but turn it into a positive, right, or, or, or spin it in a way that says, you know, you have some related experience or that you're, um, you know, able to learn it or, you know, you've had something that can give you a way where they say, okay, well, maybe they don't have that, but they can figure that out and emphasize your strengths too, right? I mean, simple stuff. I mean, being positive, being energetic, being interpersonal, being able to have a conversation. The number one thing when I sit down across the table from a potential interviewee is, am I going to want to work with this person on a regular basis. Can I come in and just have a good conversation, they hold eye contact, they can, you know, have a, a good kind of casual conversation and you say, okay, well, this person looks like they might be able to interact with a client someday. And I say, all right, well, then I go into kind of the technical stuff and I'm interested, but at the same time, I really want to know who you are as a person. So I think being yourself is really important. Yeah, I would, I would say relax. Um, I kind of fell into it when I, graduated and throwing my resume everywhere is I went on interviews, places that I didn't want to get the job, but it was a good practice. And my practice was, I, I'm gonna try and make them want me. And I failed, I never got called back sometimes, but, but it was good practice because when, when it did come to the interview that I wanted, I was comfortable. I knew a lot of the questions they were gonna go ahead and ask me, so I was prepared for that. And you know, it wasn't a brand new experience for me, so I felt a lot more relaxed. And like Chris said, I think my employer at the time saw that who I was, and you know, that I was being natural, and so he was able to see through, you know, my jitters. And, and so I, I would say, just go out on interviews that you don't even want. If someone's going to give you an interview, go practice. I mean, it's it's a good practice. And, and keep in mind too, you're interviewing them too, right? Have good questions. Um, so that always shows that you have prepared and that, that you're really interested in the position you're applying for. Absolutely, and as far as, you know, other tips is, you know, we mentioned, look professional and with it, it you know, if there's any doubt, overdress, always, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, you never know what the company culture is. If everyone is wearing jeans and you're wearing a suit, it's fine. Um, make sure that you have, if there are five things that you want that person that's interviewing you to know, make sure that you find ways to weave those into the conversation. So whether that's telling a story about, you know, the interviewers asking you, tell me about it, They'll, this is how they, they ask questions, tell me about a time, when? And so you need to have responses ready to show, and it doesn't have to be a business or a something that's a technical example. It could be, I played basketball at Oglethorpe and I was a point guard on my team, and so I had to work through the season in order for us to you know, get to the playoffs or whatever it is. You, know, you, you think about traditionally business components, but they're really, you know, I think as everyone said, they're looking about a person that's gonna be working for their company, that's gonna bring skills and attributes, and the more that you can effectively walk out of there and say, yep, I communicated everything I wanted to communicate, even if at the end of the day they don't hire you, it's a good practice for that next interview. And really attributes like leadership, being a self-starter, those are what, uh, top things that employers really look for because being a leader doesn't mean you're taking over everybody's work. It just means they can leave you unsupervised and you know complete your tasks. Uh, so 
those, you know, skills you guys have, because, you know, in school you start, you know, being involved with organizations and all that, um, of course, you're, you don't have as much um, experience, you know, they don't expect you to, but they do expect you to let them know what are those characteristics, those attributes of, you know, leadership. Um, there's, you know, if, if you've mentored, you know, anybody, they, you know, they want to know about that. Or sometimes they might not know, want to know about it, but if you share it, then, you know, they start getting ideas in their heads for a particular role for you in, in their department. And do your research on the company that you're interviewing with. I mean, I interview people all the time, and I'm thinking they don't even, this person's coming in, they don't know what my company does. You could have gone to the website, looked up the product mix, and come in, and even if it's something, and you, I see candidates all the time, that they'll say, oh, we saw last week that you gained approval on this, and da da da. That shows me that you're prepared, you thought about, you know, what your next step is. So even if it's just something small, it makes a big impact. Yeah, like most people will go on an interview and they'll send a thank you note either via email or handwritten. Um, there are differing opinions on the hand, handwritten or email, but regardless of which format you take, I get emails that say, oh, thank you so much for interviewing me. You know, I'm really excited about Ben and Thrasher. I look forward to hearing from you. It's like, well, that's nice. But if you can say something specifically in that email that says, hey, we talked about this, and I remember, like, hey, you work with entertainment clients, and that sounds really interesting to me, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon, that differentiates you. You know, I always, it's very simple, you know, it's just do a little bit more than what you think someone else is going to do. You know, and it doesn't, you don't have to hit home runs all day long. You can single and double your way to success every time. Please, though, what, when you communicate to is try to disconnect with the social media as much as possible. Please don't send them a link to your LinkedIn profile and all that. It's like, you know, because it, 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 it tells us we're not important to you. You don't have enough time to tell your prospective employer, here's who I am. Just actually send them, you know, a resume if they ask for a resume. We're not, we don't want to see links. Um, unless you're in industries where that's called for. Um, in the creative industry, of course, they want a digital portfolio um, that's different. Um, so just know what industries, you know, what's appropriate. Um, just, yeah, so we, we get so dependent on social media, it's like everything is a link. <laughs> and uh, where it's appropriate, I know in the sales world, it's, it's appropriate to have a brag book, and it's actually a book about how fabulous you are. And that's fine to create. I mean, it, it's, that's really what it is. And these are some of the projects I've done. This is a strategic plan I put together. Here's a letter of recommendation. And you can put all of that together so that when someone asks you, well, help me understand if you have experience here. You can say, well, here's an example of when I did this. And again, in all industries, it doesn't make sense but it shows that you're prepared and you're there with specific examples and it's something that you can kind of have in your back pocket. Any other questions at this point? You all touched upon several topics that I'd like to... Oh. oh, yeah, that's Yeah, right. go right ahead. I don't want to be greedy. No. <laughs> <laughs> right here. I was um, talking about how, like, what we were going to say, um, Develops. Brian was saying uh, how like he develops like critical thinking. And, uh, I was wondering if like there are certain ideas that you had that had made you apply to the outside of the university, like your industry, like what ideas did you cultivate in the old or, or that Oldworth cultivated in you that made you like unique or you know sought after? You know, like what would you suggest? Like I'm an English major and I. Don't know what I'm going to do after I graduate. It's coming up, and I want to apply to a lot of things, like Brian said. Um, but I also want to know what people are looking for, like what ideas I sh like. I have certain ideas, but are there people look looking for my, you know, in communicate communicating abilities? Like, if you could go back, would you change your major? That's a lot of questions. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I would not change my major because, I, like I said. I think the technical side of it has served me well um, because I think whatever career you, you, you're in, it, it is a business. Um, and so knowing that aspect of it, um, it, it has been very helpful. 
as far as the critical, I, I, I didn't have any original ideas, I guess, coming out of Oglethorpe because I went into construction. Um, and as much as I love Dr. Straley, I wouldn't trust him to nail a two by four together. You know, and, but, you know, and, and so the, the critical thing he came in is I was thrown into a lot of experiences or opportunities or challenges that I, I didn't have really business being in because I didn't have a construction degree from Georgia Tech or something. Um, but my, my core, my thinking and understanding why and saying, all right, here's my, here's our objective. This is our company's objective. This is where we are and these are the tools we have. How can we make that work? And that's, that's what I really relied on. Um, and so, and it, like more recently, um, you know, Habitat is a nonprofit. And there's been a big push to go build green, um, which is great, but it, green building is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're challenged with, well, do we saddle that expense with our homeowners? I mean, we're trying to end poverty housing, but you know, now we're adding hundreds of thousands of dollars on them. What can we do to still build green and be, um, you know, energy or to be energy efficient and be economical about it? Um, and so, again, our goal is to build green. These are the tools we have, and how we're going to get there is where we try and think outside of the norm, but maybe what other builders aren't doing, how we can do that. Um, so, I, like, coming out of school, I, did, I didn't have, like Chris's example, I was a blank canvas, and I had tools that I didn't have when I started about, hey, I can, I can think, I can think for myself. Um, because uh, the one thing I found, um, and it's hard when I say this, 16 years since I graduated, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, that I've never, I've never had a boss come to me and say, Brian, here's a problem, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's on page 42 of my textbook. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that doesn't happen. Um, and so, to, to answer your question, I had, I had no ideas. You know, and right. it, it kind of just it fell in place, and I think you're 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 equipped, and I don't think I really understood how equipped you are until you get into the real world, and there are people out there that got MBAs, and you're you're kind of like I don't understand why you don't get that. I mean, I'm not incredibly intelligent, but they they learn how to learn and give that information back, but when you when you sit down and they're uh, given a, a new problem that they haven't seen before, they kind of get fuddled. And, you know, and, and so, um, you know, I think, I think you're more equipped than, than you really realize. And, you know, we've all been in that position where you're like, you know, I know I have these strengths and I kind of like doing this, but what, at the end of the day, what do I do? How do I, you know, put that first foot forward? And, I always think about find industries that you're really interested in and passionate in and start digging around to understand what do people do in those industries and then think about what your strengths are and go from there because if you find an industry that you really like, I really like the industry that I work in now within healthcare and it's fun. So now, you know, I've had lots of different jobs within that industry not in some cases doing totally different things, but then you create a portfolio of an in experience within that industry that becomes incredibly valuable, even though you've done a diverse set of jobs. So something to think about. Right, okay, and life is you're going to have to do what you need to do before you get to do what you want to do. So. That's not my quote. I've read it somewhere, but I was talking to my daughter about it because she's graduated from college too um, this year. So uh, I'm sort of in the, yeah, going through that thought process with her. That's what I told her. I said, yeah, if you've got to pay your bills, you're going to have to do that for a while. Eventually, things will, you'll figure it out. You're an Oval Farm grad, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it'll come. It'll come. Um, I think with me, I, I didn't have any ideas. Too, but it came to me in reverse. 
I've been out in the real world for a while, and then um, you know I came back at Oglethorpe um, to help in the special events department, um, working in the TV film industry. I was like, okay, how do I bring this back to my school? It's a beautiful school. We can showcase it. They can make you know it's a potential revenue for the school. So I started bringing in projects here, commercials, uh, photo projects. Um, uh, TV shows. Speaking of which, tonight is Constantine on NBC at 10 o'clock. Oglethorpe, this is background. So it's backdrop. So you'll you'll recognize the buildings. You're like, ooh, it looks kind of spooky. But yeah, that that's that's tonight. That's tonight. Um, so to me, that that was in reverse. It's like I always thought in the back of my mind, it's like, hey, you know, Oglethorpe's this beautiful campus. Um, what can I do? What can I do to kind of bring it back? Um, being that you're in the, that industry of Viacom, um, having been in the, in the real world doing doing actually what you love doing, the, as as um as the business side of it is concerned, as as it relates to overthrow, is there any recommendation you can have as far as being specific, specific in that discipline that relates to that type of business? Yes, because TV and film industry is so diverse. If if you're you've done let's say home improvement you've been in that construction you know business uh, set design the we, we hire union um, construction workers and all that there's transportation there's an art department um, there's culinary department um, so the business side of it too if you're an accountant we have production accountants you, you know they run payroll uh, there's so many things you can get involved in it um, it's not just you know the glamour of Hollywood and all that it's an actual workplace um, so to me and they're medics I have retired um, we've hired retired um, uh, workers from Grady Hospital or they worked in the military they've come back and joined the, the medical union um, so it, because it's such, the industry is just booming here in Georgia there's a place for everybody you don't have to have that type of uh, background in film but there's different traits that you can be involved in um, no. I'm talking about the business side of it as it relates to uh, how you contract, I mean, how you, how you make deals, how you get into the, the, the actual operation, not just as far as logistics, but the, uh, the decision making, in partnership, mergers, in that particular setting. I mean, is there any, any, any course or anything you took from over throw or that you see within our curriculum okay. that can Sorry, I misunderstood. Yes, as a business major, yes, I was well with with but I am one you have to understand understand structure, right? How an organization works because you have to work with those people. There's one, and then there's the financial aspect of it. You have to know um, basic economics, it's demand, demand supply. Um, so to me, as a business major, and then you know me when I wanted to go into human resource management. It's the human side of it. You're gonna interact with people with like schizophrenic personalities. You got, no, I'm just kidding. But um, I'm just saying that it's crazy out there. There are, there's some crazies out there. Uh, but but those things that I learned in college, yes, they play into it. No matter what industry I worked in, it, it's it's all the same. It's all the same. It's a different playground. People play differently, but the structure is the same structure is the same so yeah so whatever um, you know core a lot of communications a lot of the history um, especially now that I'm just learning that I'm like man I wish I learned that there's a lot about locations about geography about history of a certain place um, uh, the same production company I just worked for actually did Selma so a lot of that backdrop that history um, takes me back to college because I, I minored in history. So um, yes, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it that I realize the more I'm out of the real world, um, the more I'm taken back to you know, where I've learned it. And you all probably sometimes maybe, you know, when you get a reading assignment, it seems very painful. I remember I mean, the number of pages that I had to read on a weekly basis, which just seemed like way more than any, any of my peers that were at other universities. 
but now, you know, my, in my day to day, I'm working with contracts, negotiations, mergers, mergers and acquisitions, reading legal documents, trying to understand how am I going to negotiate with this top five pharma, this deal, and you're having to communicate with lawyers on the phone, and you're having to do a lot of reading and a lot of comprehension, and then problem solving for how am I going to get this lawyer and this lawyer to agree, and I don't have a law degree. So I mean, those are things that it makes me appreciate when my freshman year, human nature and the social order, I mean, you know, you're reading Don Quixote, it's like, seriously? But it makes a difference, for sure. My business law class, yeah, definitely. Now that you can mention that. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they know that Oglethorpe is a great university, um, and the fact that you know, you, you, you're a product of a, of a great university is wonderful. But even explaining, look, I wasn't sitting in classes where there were 400 people, and I would had, you know, I never raised my hand and you know got my A and got out of there. Yeah, I mean, some, it, it, if you go to other universities, you cannot attend a class and make an A in the class. That is not Oglethorpe. Every it's, 12 people, if you don't come prepared, if you're not ready to discuss, you're not doing well. And so that sets you aside because that's a very unique experience to the other schools in the metro Atlanta area, is that you have to show up and you have to be ready. And, and you have to tell that critical thinking story that we've been telling this whole time that really <laughs> differentiates you as a graduate, right? And a, a simple way to tell it too is a really good GPA. And you can tell too, some who come from like big schools, very rigid, they don't have a sense of humor. Liberal arts students are more kind of free flowing, they can chill, um, they can fit in. So uh, employers can tell. And there are employers that don't care. They, they, they're like, oh, go where? It's like they haven't even heard of the school, but like you guys are saying, tell the story where you came from because then uh, that gets them very interested. And then they're going to go, that explains it. It's like why you're thinking the way you're thinking, um, so the ideas you come up with, or just how you, you present yourself, and it comes out. And don't discount it relative to Emory or Tech or anywhere else. I mean, nine times out of ten, I tell someone I went to Oglethorpe University, they go, wow, that's a really good school. So I don't think you're, I think it's a perception thing more than it is a reality. So would you say that like um, when you went out to get jobs and stuff that having a liberal arts degree as opposed to just like a normal degree set you out in a good way um, to find a job like in the way that you thought or relatively the same and just the other things that you talked about today would go would help you more than like when people see that like you have a liberal arts degree if that makes sense. No? I think on yeah, paper, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think on paper, I think on paper, definitely, if someone really understands what that is, it can set you apart for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if, if they understand what a liberal arts degree means, then it does make a difference. But most of the time, it's perceived as a more well-rounded education. Right. That, you know, it's it's definitely a positive. And if the person interviewing you went to a liberal arts school they understand what that is, and that's an instant connection. Because a lot of times, when you back to interviews, you're finding, you know, even just by meeting that person within five minutes and looking within their office, where can we connect, right? If I see that they, you know, went to Swanee School of the South, oh, we played you guys in basketball when I was at Oglethorpe, da, da, da. You're finding ways that, and the liberal arts degree is just one of those commonalities that you may have with a potential employer. <coughs> I was just wondering if you all could um, speak to your definition of success and how that might have evolved over the course of your careers, if it has changed. I'm not stepping to play on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, my, my definition of success is just being happy. Um, and <clears throat> not so much 
uh, with material things, but with family and friends. Um, and that, that's, I don't know if that's changed over the years. I, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I want to be successful at my job and be promoted and have new challenges put on my plate all the time. But for me, it's always been a quality of life more so than, than quantity. I think it boils down really to a feeling of purpose, you know, like that I'm right. getting up every day and I'm doing something that matters. And I think that's a very simple and yet very complicated um, definition because you really want to get up every day, leave these doors of this institution and do something that you want to do that matters. So I'm going to take a little bit different approach because I totally agree that at the end of the day, you want to be happy, you want to be content, you want to be fulfilled, be being, right? Um, but then you guys probably always all have parents that are like, oh, I'll just get a job, graduate, that'll make us so happy, right? So I, I think that you know, at the end of the day, success is about like owning it for yourself, owning what that it, next step is because it's not about you know and people say it's not about the destination it's about the journey it's so true it's about enjoying where you are even if where you are may you may not think that that's a great place for an end place but just enjoying it and, and being content where you, where where your career and where your life takes you the beginning success to me was whatever my parents defined success. It was very traditional. You're going to go to school, you're going to become a yeah, lawyer, a doctor, whatever. I was going to become a vice president of like some big company. I don't know. Never was. <laughs> you know? It was never my ambition. So um, that was what I thought success was. But the older I got, it's more of me making an impact. Making an impact to people if, if I can help them kind of, you know, find meaning in their life. I'm not saying, you know, I want to save the world and all that, but I want to feel valuable. Um, and that's why I left the corporate world because I ended up just being a number. So, you know, my value, I think to me, in my eyes, um, that, that kind of diminished. You know, I want to be, I want it to be more impactful. So I left that industry. You know, it works for, for a lot of people, but for me, um, and, and that's why I love going to Oglethorpe because it was a small community where I can be impacted and I can be an impact. If I had gone to a bigger school, um, I would be another number. So um, to me, that's, that's success to me is, is if I'm feeling I, if there's purpose and being impactful, um, I'm happy, that's where, that's where I need to be. Well, I want to say thank you to all the panelists for your time and efforts today. We so appreciate your insight.